All right, here we go. 15 questions on Monday's test. If the population of the world equals P sub T in billions of people, and the population was taken on January 1st of 2020, where T is the number of years, what does P uh, of one mean, the first derivative of P of one mean? The change of population in the one time period, right? So, if that means a change of population, um, on January 1st, what year do you think it would be at P sub 1? 2021, January 21st, 2021, what do we know is happening? Oop, I didn't, I didn't have it scrolled down far enough. What does this mean? On January 1st, 21st, January 1st, 2021, what does this mean? On January 1st, 2021, the population is growing this many billion per year. Okay? Get, is that reasonable for you guys to understand? Yeah. Okay, because this is change in. This is one year after the original year, and this is how much it is changing. Okay. Candy factory. Okay? It's not the candy factor. It's candy factory. Um, so, let's say that we know that the first derivative of the candy factory at three hours equals 100, okay, is 100. So, C sub X shows how many candies are produced each hour. So then C prime of three means that they're producing candy at a rate of 100 pieces per hour, three hours after it starts, okay? It's producing 100 pieces per hour, three hours after it starts, okay? Because um, C sub X is the total number No, that's not pieces per hour. C sub X is the total number of pieces of candy produced in a day. So this would be how much is produced three hours into it. Okay? So this is a total number. This is not the pieces per hour. Okay. So just so that's clear to you. All right. If this is a position function... What would be the velocity function of that? First derivative. So it would be 6t squared plus 8t plus 6. What is the velocity of that? What would be the acceleration function? Which would be 12t plus 8, right? What would a sub 2 be? 12 times 2 plus 8. So 24 plus 8, which is 32. That would be the velocity of it. Okay? All right. Here's a bug crawling, and this is a velocity versus time graph. Velocity versus time. So the bug was going zero, then it's go one inch per second, then it's going two inches per second, then it's still going two inches per second, then one inch per second, then zero inches per second. Then how fast is it going here? 
like negative negative one and a half inches per second, right? And it stays at negative one and a half inches per second. Okay. So that's the path of the bug. When does the bug turn around? After how many seconds does the bug turn around? One, two, three, four, five. After five seconds, the bug turns around. Okay? Because the velocity was positive, now it's negative. Okay, here's the speed of a car. When is a car increasing in speed? When is a car increasing in speed? Between time equals what and what? Zero and, five. Zero and four, I would say, because it's kind of leveled off there. Zero and four. Any other times the time that the car is increasing in speed? Seven to eight and a half, right? It's increasing in speed. So between here and here, it's increasing, and here and here, it's increasing. Okay? That's where it's increasing in velocity. About how fast is that car traveling at hour number three? So an hour, it takes off at hour zero. After one hour, it's traveled 10 miles. After two hours, it's traveled 22 miles. After three hours, it's traveled 38 miles. After four hours, it's traveled 60 miles, and so on. How fast is it traveling at hour number three? How would we figure this out? Nineteen-ish. Okay, that's that's pretty good guess. Um, a way we could figure this out is find the slope from here to here, the numbers that directly surround it. So you'd take 60 minus 22, change in distance over the change in time, 4 minus 2, which would be 38 over 2, which is 19-ish. Yeah, 19-ish. Because we don't know if it's exactly 19. Okay, if x, y equals 20 and y equals 5 and d sub y, d sub y dt equals 10, how would we find dx dt? Product rule. x, dy dt plus y dx dt equals zero, okay? What's x? Yeah, instead of x, y equals 20, then it's y equals 20. Yeah, so if you stick five in here, you figure out x equals four, right? So x is four, dy dt is 10, y is five, dx dt is what we're looking for, so 4 times 10 is 40. If we subtract 40 from each side, 5 dx dt equals negative 40 and divide by 5. dx dt is negative 8. It's decreasing at 8. Okay, here's a cylinder. What's the change in volume at the exact moment where its radius is 2, its height is 10, and its radius is decreasing at a rate of 0.1 meters per second, and its height is increasing at a rate of 0.4 meters per second? How do we go about this? What is dv dt equal to? Yeah, we're using pi r squared h. How do we do that? Yeah, 
Nah, you're not quite there. Remember product rule. So let's do product rule in this. Pi r squared times times dh dt plus h times 2 pi r dr dt. Yep, you keep the pi. It's like a number. So it's pi times 2 squared times 0 0.4 plus 10 times 2 times pi times 2 times dr dt, which is negative 0 0.1, because decreasing. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 0.4 is 1.6. So we have 1.6 pi there. Plus 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 10 is 40. 40 times 0.1 is 4. So it's negative 4 pi. So its volume is a negative 2.4 pi, which is probably impossible, but, you know, hey. That's what happens when Mr. Birschbach makes up some random problem. Okay? We good there? Yeah. Oh, the change in volume. No, you can have a negative change in volume. Yeah. You can you just can't have a negative volume. You can have a negative change in volume. Okay, so negative two point four pi works. Okay, ladder. Mr. Beerschbach is on the ladder, and oh no, it's falling. Ah, Mr. Beerschbach's falling. What should he do? I don't know. But oh no, did it stop recording? No, I think we're still recording. Okay. So, how Mr. Bearsbach is going down at one feet per second. How, fa how fast is the ladder going out here? Okay. So, we would do what? All right, so we know C is 13. What's DC, DT? How, how fast is the ladder changing length? It is not, so that is zero. What is the length of A at the bottom? What do we have to do to figure out A? So A is 5, DA, DT is what we're looking for, B is 12, DB, DT is negative 1. So 0 equals 10, DA, DT, minus 24. So if we add 24 to each side... So dA dt equals 2.4. So it's going 2.4 feet per second away from the wall, the bottom of the ladder is. 
at that point. All right. So if we know f of 5 equals 10 and f of the first derivative of 5, f of the function at 5 is 3, what's an estimate for f of 4.9? Probably. We'll see how close Taylor is. So we know y equals mx plus b. So 10 is equal to m is 3, because that's our slope, times 5 plus b. So 10 equals 15 plus b, b equals negative 5. So our function is f of x equals 3x minus 5. So if we put in 4.9 here, 3 times 4.9 minus 5 is 14.7, um, right? Minus 5, which is 9.7. Okay, if I stick in pi right now, I get 0 over 0. Because the sine of pi is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Pi over pi, pi minus pi is 0. So 0 over 0. So what should I do in this case? Take the derivative of the top and bottom. What's the derivative of 2 sine of x? 2 cosine of x. What's the derivative of x minus pi? 1. What's the cosine at pi? Negative 1. So it's 2 times negative 1 divided by 1, which is negative 2. The limit as x approaches 0 here, I get e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Over 2 times 0 is 0. 0 over 0 is can't figure it out. So we have to take the first derivative. What's the first derivative of e to the x minus 1? e to the x. What's the first derivative of 2x? 2. So we get e to the 0, which is 1 over 2. 1 half. As we go towards infinity, we get infinity over infinity. So what should we do? 2x over e to the x. If I stick in infinity, I get infinity over infinity. So what should I do? Take the derivative again. It's 2 over e to the x. So it's 2 over infinity. Any number over infinity equals 0. And there we are. That is your test review for your test, AP Classroom test on